Greetings, citizens of the internet. I'm Static Buzz, and this is going to be a build guide, which I normally don't do, but I've been playing a lot of Diablo 4, and the rogue that I'm playing, and the way that I'm playing, I haven't seen anybody make a build guide for this build, and I think it's pretty awesome, so I'm going to be sharing it with you, with everybody. Now, keep in mind, this is at level 30. I don't know how it scales. I don't know how it fits into the meta. It's just the build that I find the most fun out of all the classes so far. So that's why I'm sharing it. It seems to melt things for the most part. I would play most of the, my playthrough so far, I say, to level 23-ish on tier World Tier 1. And then to make sure that this build was good enough, I switched to Tier 2. I was just kind of taking it easy, but then when I decided to make the video, I said, well, I better crank it up to World Tier 2 just to see the, how it fares. And it seems to fare pretty well. It's a rogue, so if it gets if they get hit by certain enemies, they do take some damage. So you got to watch for that. But you'll see in the build that it has three ways of getting out of trouble. And four, if you have the extra evade on your boots, which I did have until recently, but I made it a legend, got a legendary item for my boots and I switched it out. So with the extra evade, that would be four evades. So keep in mind, like I said, this is level 30. So looking at the gear, so I'm going to go over everything on the build and then I'm going to go out and show you guys how it performs so you guys can see it. But when it comes to gear, the only thing you really need is this legendary ability. Flurry damages enemy in a circle around you and deals 30% extra damage. Now, that was a drop. So if you don't get the drop, you can, you can get this aspect here. It does a lot less damage, but it does what we want to do with making the flurry in a circle. So I'll, I'll go out of town and show you how this works. All right, so I'll go here and then I will unequip this and I'll hit flip. And you can see that it's only in front. As soon as I equip this, 360 around me. That's what we want. So that is the main thing. Now, so these other ones, they're just extras. They're not really all that important. I have this because I just got it and it was... Just something to throw on there. Energy is not really a concern here, but this will help. This helps with uh, a magic bubble that comes around you when you're hitting a healthy enemy. This puts a bar barrier around you. This is very useful when you're hitting elites and stuff. So this can only happen every 30 seconds. So if you're in a boss fight, this seems to last for a minute, minute and a half. You can get this two to three times, so it's a good good uh, legendary ability to have and this here really doesn't matter for my build at all whatsoever so let's go over the encircling flurry ability and where to get that so early on when you're playing rogue I think level 15 you'll get the rogue quest so that you can unlock the specializations and whatnot it's going to take you to this Forsaken Quarry. You don't have to clear the quarry for the quest, but I recommend you do it because that's how you get the aspect of the encircling flurry. And you really want that because it makes everything yeah. work. All right. Specialization. We're, I'm going combo points, and I'll show you why later. Neither of these really synergize well with the build that I'm using but combo points do and they help the damage output a lot so all right let's go over to our basic abilities here and this is where the meat and potatoes is so I use invigorating strike you could use blade shift if you prefer that one if you did I would probably recommend going with the extra non-physical resistance while blade shift is active this here really won't get you much in the way of the build but this would for me I use invigorate and then I come over to this one where I uh, oh actually you know that's that's wrong I was testing something this is what I use over here for vulnerable so when you're below 50% energy anybody you hit with invigorate 
will make them vulnerable. And where this comes into play is on the actual flurry, which we come down to here. That's the next, I don't know what you want to call these, the next, uh, these are the core skier skills, but I don't know if we, we have a name for like tree branch one, two, three, or anything like that, but we'll just call this what it is, core skills. And we have flurry, Obviously, you pick the middle one, and then over here, if Flurry hits a vulnerable enemy, it will make all enemies hit by it vulnerable for three seconds. That is a huge damage increase right there. So, basically, you, if you're low on your energy, right here, you use Invigorate to get your combos up and your energy up, and then you hit Flurry again. Anything that was vulnerable, it's going to go to everything around you, and it's going to make them vulnerable. Huge, huge damage increase, like I said. All right. So that is the second branch, or the core skills. Down here, I have one point into dash so that we have that extra get out of trouble move, and actually two of them because you get two dashes. And... I also have this because it increases the critical damage, strike damage, for five seconds when you do dash. So that's helpful. Excuse me there. And do I have, yeah, over here I also have this. You gain 12% close damage reduction. You're going to be in the middle of damage a lot, in the middle of a, a group of enemies. That's what you want to be. So having 12% Close damage reduction is important. Sorry, I almost skipped over that. I don't want to do that. You could also put some points into this. This would help you with your damage reduction. I haven't done that yet. I probably will. I'm going to make another guide for when I hit 50 and this is all filled out as much as I can. Coming down here, I have one point into Dark Shroud just for the... 8% damage reduction. Now I have 8.8 .8 because I have an item that gives me an extra subter subterfuge skill. So that's why that's at 2, but I only put 1 point into it. Now here's what makes the build work, in my opinion, is this. Shadow Imbuement. I haven't maxed it out yet. I have 1 point from items, so it's, once I max it out it'll be 6. But what, how this works is you yeah. imbue your weapons yeah. and then you get into combat. Now this move, you can refresh, I think it's every 13 seconds, 2.6 seconds. And that will be based off of your, which one was it? Because it started at 13 seconds. So there's something that I have that is increasing the, reduce, reducing the cooldown. What do I have that's reducing the cooldown? I'm not sure. I, I, I know that default, that one is 13 seconds. So if you can get it down, great. If not, then well, it's fine. 13 seconds is not that bad. And then over here I have the shadow imbuement and explosive. Explosion makes enemies vulnerable because I like that more than I like this. I like them to be vulnerable. I put one point into this just so that I could go and get this. This is why we don't have an energy problem because if we kill things with shadow, then we generate 30 energy. And if you look at our flurry, flurry takes 25 energy. So anytime we kill something with shadow, we basically get a free flurry. And that could be anything that is has shadow damage on it and you kill it with a move that doesn't. Because when you imbue, it gives them shadow damage for six seconds. And then if you kill them, they explode and you can see the explosion damage there. So that is that one, that branch. Then we go down to our ultimate and I'm using the shadow clone. The shadow clone is great for when you have a boss or an elite and you need to take them down a little faster because they will do everything you do 
and it says 80% of your damage, but then you go here and it gives you another 20%. So basically 100% of your damage, you become unstoppable for five seconds. That's because of this skill here. But this is the main one you want. You want this and you want to make sure you get that. And then you have a shadow clone every 60 seconds in a sense, but my cooldown is being reduced by something, which I don't know what it is. And I haven't really fully decided where I'm going to go here, but that is the skills that I have and now we will go and I will show you how it works all right so I don't normally just attack the first thing that comes to me like this bear he has a lot of health right so I'm gonna get these guys together and their explosion didn't take him out which is a shame now this is after the fight I'm gonna automatically imbue my weapons again because I want that cooldown to start. I don't want to be waiting. The dark shroud around me is a 20 second cooldown. You only need one of those bubbles to get the 8% reduction. So it's not as important that you refresh that but if you're walking around and you know you got 20 seconds you might as well refresh it because then it'll last longer and it'll be good for the next fight. See if we can find something a little more meaty to get into here. took a little bit of damage there because I wasn't paying close enough attention but you can see how the shadow clone comes in and helps out refresh and go again now what really makes this work and I'm squeaking I don't know why I'm squeaking is that you gather up enemies and bring them together and make them explode on each other so we're gonna Gonna come over here. Now, even without my shadow, how you want to do this is you want to get three charges and then use it. Three charges and then use your flurry. And the reason why you want to do it that way is we go back and look at the abilities on the flurry. You can see the damage increase based off the combo points. It is, it basically doubles with three combo points. Well, almost doubles, I should say, with three combo points. So anyways, that is the build guide. Uh, I will do, an, if this one does well, I will do another one at level 50. We'll do that. Keep and one thing to keep in mind is that even if I don't finish them off with the initial shadow imbued flurry, as long as I kill them within six seconds, they will still explode. So that is why it's important to make sure that uh, you keep on them. If they're purple, you want to keep on them, and then. You use a couple flurries, and when the fl the they they blow up, you'll get thirty uh, shadow back or spirit or whatever it is that we use for these abilities. What is it? Essence by energy? It's energy, right? Yeah, energy. You'll get thirty energy back even if you didn't kill them with the initial flurries, as long as they still have the shadow imbuement on them. So. All right, so that is the build guide. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope I didn't miss anything. I didn't really plan this out. I just kind of wanted to do it. So anyways, until next video, take care. Bye-bye now. Static Buzz out. Something forged. Came about nicely.